<clears throat> Let's come to 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. One of uh, my favorite stories in the Bible. And uh, hopefully uh, you know what story that it is. It's probably one of the, uh, probably one of the most um, talked about stories in all of the Bible. And uh, regarding David and Goliath. Amen. David and Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter number 17 is where we will be at this morning. And uh, we welcome all of our guests and all of our visitors. Um, even if you are from Louisiana, then uh, we will pray that, uh, that you are converted and um, that you'll get right with the Lord today. Amen? So, uh, I've been trying to do that for about 10 years now. <laughs> Maybe today is the day. Uh, Brother Calvin and Sister Sam were members uh, when I pastored down in Louisiana, and they can attest that I was terrible then, and I'm still terrible now. Amen. Not much has changed. So, uh, but uh, anyways, we uh, appreciate them being. We're not thankful for the circumstances that they're up through this way, but uh, they got up at three o'clock this morning. And uh, just to come to church, amen. They were that excited to hear me to preach. Now, I know the rest of y'all were the same way, right? Uh, but they drove up. They live uh, in uh, Doritter, Louisiana. And uh, that's a little bit away from uh, the church where I used to pastor in a town called, if you're Normie people, it was called Maryville. But if you're from Maryville, it's called Marvel. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So um, it's kind of like Derek's, right? If you're weird, you call it Dirk's. But if you're normal like me, you call it Derek's. Well, that's like <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, we're grateful and thankful that they're here, and it is good to see them. Um, they uh, still wanted to, to come to church after all these years and still hear me preach. Can you imagine that? Amen. <laughs> That should give you a, 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 little, a little bit of uh, insight into probably their, uh, uh, into their mental health. Amen. Uh, they wanted to come and hear me preach still after all of these years. So y'all pray for them. Amen. Y'all pray for them. Um, <clears throat> First Samuel chapter number 17. Everybody there this morning? Everybody knows the story in verse number 1. Kind of a little reading this morning, but uh, we're going to kind of set this thing up and... Uh, but uh, this is what the Lord has laid on my heart this morning. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, verse number 1. It says this, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shukah, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shukah and Azekiah and Ephes Damium. And Saul, the men of Israel, were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on, the other, on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Verse number 4, And there went out a, a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Six cubits and a span. So if you... Do the math and you figure that up. Six cubits and a span was somewhere probably around nine and a half feet. Amen. He was about nine and a half feet tall. And uh, so how would you like to have that on your basketball team? Uh, nine and a half feet tall. And notice in verse number five, And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. 5,000 shekels of brass. And when you go and you do the measurements on what 5,000 shekels of brass, depending on who you read after or what you look at, somewhere between probably about 120 to 150 pounds, somewhere through there. So here's a guy, he's nine and a half foot tall, he's got uh, this helmet and um, <clears throat> upon his head and, 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 and this coat of mail or chain mail upon his chest, protecting um, his chest and his, his heart and all of his insides and all of those types of things, which weighed about 150 pounds. Um, so, I mean, so you can kind of already see a picture here already, right? Goliath was not a small guy. He was a big guy. He was a champion, he says, of the Philistines. Verse 6, And he had greaves of brass upon his leg and a target of brass between his shoulders. Greaves, leg greaves, were the things that they wore in the front to cover their shins, all right? The leg greaves. 
And uh, he had a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. So his shield was so big that they had to have an individual go before him that would actually carry the shield before him on this 150 pounds of armor, right? And uh, the Bible says that he had a, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the staff of a spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spears had weighed 600 shekels of iron. Or in other words, depending on where you look and where you study, somewhere between probably 20 and 30 pounds was just the tip of his spear. Now, there's a lot of people that, uh, that, that have averaged this out and, and all these smart people that say that if the tip of the spear was somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds, then the staff itself had to be at least 12 foot long to have the proper balance. So think about that for just a few moments. Here's a guy, he's nine and a half foot tall, almost 10 foot tall. He's got on 150 pounds worth of... Uh, of armor uh, to include his helmet. He's got a staff that's 12 foot long and his shield is so big that he has to have someone go before him and actually carry it. Amen. And uh, so if he was to look at it from the outside looking in, it would obviously, it would be uh, 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 kind of overwhelming if you looked at it, right? And notice, y'all know the rest of the story, but notice in verse number 8, And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out of the, your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me, and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him, and kill him, then shall ye be our servants, and serve us." And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of, of Bethle, uh, Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among for an old man in those days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle, and the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab the firstborn, and the next Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three, of the, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned turned to Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem, and the Philistine drew near uh, morning and evening and presented himself forty days. Of course, we know the story. We know the rest of the story, what happens, right? And uh, we know the story about uh, David and Goliath and how Goliath continued to, um, to try to continue to draw a reaction out of the Israelites and how for 40 days he come out and he would um, taunt them and he would uh, 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 talk to them and, 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 and say all of these different things trying to get them to send a man out to battle. And uh, of course Saul was, was a chicken and he wasn't going to go. And neither was David's three brothers that were elder than him. They wasn't going to go. And uh, they could not find a man that would go out and fight against this giant of a man, as we made mention, named Goliath. Of course we know what happens with the rest of the story. Skip on down to verse number 31 and notice a few things about this. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So here's David, after all of these grown men, and which, by the way, when you do the math, if you begin to look and you begin to study about the Jewish culture and Jewish history and, and, and how it's lined up in the Bible, you'll see that men below the age of 20 were not yet mature enough according to the Jewish uh, culture and history to go into battle. So we know that David was probably at, uh, somewhere uh, uh, below the age of 19, probably somewhere between 17 and 19 years old. Here he was. You say, how do you know that? Because he wasn't old enough to go off to battle yet, like his three eldest brothers. But yet, here's David. He's having to tend to his father's herds, right? And he goes back. He tends to his father's herds. But yet, here's David. Here's David, a young man, but yet he is willing to stand up and take on this giant named Goliath. Y'all with me? I mean, that's a pretty brave young man if you begin to think about it, right? 
I mean, here you are. You've got Saul. You've got his three eldest brothers. You've got all of these other men that were there gathered in this valley, gathered on this mountain. And uh, not a single one of them, not a single one of them would volunteer to go down and face Goliath. But yet David stood up and took on that responsibility. Amen. And he said to Saul and all of the other one, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go. David said, I'll go. Amen. And fight with the Philistine. Verse 33, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go up against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. And thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And his uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. Now, he, uh, he put his money where his mouth is once, but he's certainly doubling down on it now, right? And, uh, um, and I mean, that's pretty crazy when you begin to think about it. I don't know about that, but I mean, if I seen a lion and a bear coming after uh, my father's flock, I'd probably just, uh, I'd turn around and go the other way, right? But not David. David stood up and he slew this lion and this bear. And now he's telling Saul that just as I slew uh, this lion and this bear, I'm going to slew that Philistine in the exact same way. Amen. I mean, that's, that's pretty courageous when you begin to think about it, right? And uh, you say, David's either uh, real young and real dumb, or David's real stupid, right? One of the two. Verse 37, notice what he says, And David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor. Now think about this. Think about this picture for just a second. Here's David, a young man, right? Not even old enough to go out to war. But yet here he is, he says, just as I slew this lion and just as I slew this bear, just as the Lord was with me and saw me through this, he is going to see me through this fight with this Philistine. And, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I trust God that he is going to see me through this fight, through this battle. So here's Saul. Saul says, it doesn't motivate Saul to step up and say, hey, well, if David... Can do it. If David has faith enough to stand up against the giant, then you know what? Then I can have the same faith that David has. But no, Saul says, here you go, here's my armor. Have fun. Right? Here's my armor. You just take my armor. You take my shield. And have at it. May the Lord be with you. Right? But notice what happens. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and essayed it to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. He said, I have not proved them. In other words, I've never worn these. I've never tested these out. I don't know if they'll work. I don't know how strong this metal is. I don't know if I can even, you know, if I'm even big enough to even use this sword well enough. He says, I have not proved these things. Therefore, he, the Bible says, I say them. In other words, he set them aside. He wasn't going to take them. Wasn't going to use them. Right? So not only, not only does he have the courage to stand and face the Philistine, right? But now he says, look, I don't even want your armor, Saul. You keep it. I haven't proved these things. It's never been tested. Therefore, he said, you just keep them. And he put them off, the Bible says. Now notice what happens. Notice what David did, though. Amen. Here's the topic of my message this morning. I want you to notice what David did do in verse number 40. And he took his staff in his hand. And he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. 
And he drew near to the Philistine. You say, what in the world is he doing? Well, if you look there at what the Bible says, he took a staff, he went to the brook, and he chooses out five smooth stones, and he puts them on the bag that is on his side along with his slingshot. Amen? Along with his slingshot. And uh, you say, what happened? Well, then he goes out to meet Goliath. You say, now, why in the world? Now, I want you to think about this for just a second, all right? Here's David. He's, he's, he's going down. He's, he's going to challenge the Philistine. Saul offers his armor and his weapon to him. He politely declines because he's never used them. He's never proved them. And something that's never been proved and never been tested can't be trusted. Amen? You with me this morning? A faith that has never been tested can't be trusted. Right? I preached that uh, a couple of Sundays ago. But not only does he do this, he says no thanks, but yet he goes to the brook, he draws him five smooth stones, he puts them in his bag, he grabs a slingshot, and off he goes. You say, well, why in the world would he grab five smooth stones? Amen? Now, some of you Bible scholars, you may think about 2 Samuel chapter number 21, when eventually we see that David ends up using these five stones on Goliath's brothers. Amen? But uh, I want you to think about it. At this point, David doesn't know anything about Goliath's brothers at this point. Instead, David does not go and pick up just one smooth stone from the brook. Instead, he gets five smooth stones from the brook and he places them in his bag. Amen? He places them in his shepherd's bag. Notice verse number 41, And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou should come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. In the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle isn't David's. Amen. But notice what he says, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. And it came to pass that when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it. <laughs> I like that, amen. Y'all didn't know the Bible was written in Southern sometimes, did you? David took that stone and he slung it. He didn't even slung it, he slung it, amen. <laughs> oh. And smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. But there was no, but there was no stone and smote the Philistine that slew him and there was no sword in the hand of David. Of David. Amen. I want to preach to you for just a few moments this morning on keep slanging stones. Amen. Keep slanging stones. As you see there, when David comes to meet the Philistine, as I pointed out, he hasted and he ran towards the army of the Philistine. 
And he reached his hand into his bag where he had placed those five stones. He took one out. He took thence a stone and he slang it. He puts it in a slingshot and he slang it and he hits Goliath right in the center of the forehead. And the Bible says so hard that the stone sunk into his forehead and obviously killed Goliath with just a sling and a stone and uh, did not use a sword, did not have any armor. Instead, all all he had was in the faith, his faith in the God that he served and the God of Israel and five smooth stones and a slingshot. Amen. Now, I want to uh, uh, make an observation here to you in ju for just a few moments and explain to you what I mean when I say that uh, the, to keep slinging stones. Amen. Or slanging. We got to sling them stones, right? Keep slinging stone. Now think about this for just a second. David, when he went to the brook, did not grab just one stone. He didn't grab just one stone. Instead, he grabbed five stones. Amen? He grabbed five stones, five smooth stones from the brook. He, he found five smooth stones and he put them in his shepherd's bag. And that's what he went out with his sling to meet the giant Goliath. Now think about this for just a second. At this point in time, David did not know that Goliath had other brothers, that there were other giants that later that he would have to slew in the very same manner that he slew Goliath in. He did not know any of that. But yet, David did not go and just get one stone. But instead, David went and he drew five smooth stones and placed them in the shepherd's bag. You say, preacher, you've been said that 37 times already. Listen to me. I'm trying to get you to understand the point that even though David had great faith, David trusted in the Lord his God, the God of Israel, the same God that had saw him through his victories with the lion and the bear, the same God that he had saw all of those years of his, of his youth. He had saw all of the victories that the Israelites had won. They had saw everything that they had been through and how God had delivered them. But yet David still drew five smooth stones. You say, what do you, what's the point you're trying to get at this morning? Here's my point and it's simple. Amen. You good, Brother Brett? You killing hogs last night? No? Killed some time though, huh? A lot of energy? Amen. Brother Brett said they went hogging last night. And apparently that means hunting hogs, right? I told him my day hogging meant something different, but we won't go into that. Amen? But here's David, he drew five stones. You say, what are you trying to talk about? What are you trying to get to us? What's the point that you're trying to make, preacher? The point that I'm trying to make to you is, is that even though David had faith, David planned ahead in that he thought there might be a chance that he could miss. You with me? You see, he didn't just draw one stone in the surety that he would just first shot just hit Goliath right between the eyes and Goliath would be dead, right? Instead, David drew five stones with, with the understanding that there was a chance that he might miss the mark. You with me this morning? I'm trying to preach to you a few moments here this morning on keep slinging stones. Amen? You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? What I'm trying to tell you is, is that even though David had faith, I mean, he had great faith. I mean, David had saw what God had delivered him, what he had delivered uh, the Jews, the Israelites through, but yet David knew that there still could be human error. David knew that he could still fail. David knew that he could still miss the mark. David knew that he could still come up short. So what did he do? He planned ahead. He drew not one stone, but five stones to place into a shepherd's bag because he knew that even though he was going out to fight the battle, that God had called him to fight, he knew there was a chance that he could fail. Amen. Can I share with you this morning? There's a chance that you and I can fail. Amen. Uh, there's a chance that we don't always do everything right the first time. 
there's a chance that you and I can mess things up. Amen? There's a chance that you and I uh, don't always get it right the first time. Y'all with me this morning? Can I share with y'all this morning just by way of uh, uh, just, uh, just kind of sharing my heart with y'all this morning? I haven't always got everything right. Amen? Matter of fact, I've probably messed up way more stuff than I've ever got right in my life. Amen? I've got a couple of things right. One of them is being that I accepted Jesus as my Savior. Amen? Uh, so I've made a couple of good decisions in my life. But, but I've made a whole a lot of bad ones in my life too. You say, but you're a preacher. Yeah, but I'm even trying to tell you that in the ministry, amen, even though I, I, I was like, like Paul said, like the Corinthians, I, I was zealous, had zeal without knowledge, right? Um, I was full of vinegar. I just didn't know what to do with it, right? Man, I was fired up, ready to go for the Lord. And although I was in the Lord's will, man, I had faith in God. I trusted the Lord. But yet sometimes things don't always go the way we plan. Y'all with me? You say, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you to keep slinging stones. You see, David not just, he didn't just grab one stone. He grabbed five. You say, why? Because David knew that there's a chance he could miss the mark. David knew there's a chance that he might need more than just one stone. Amen. The first one might not do it. It may be the second time or the third time or the fourth time. Or it could be even on the fifth time that the stone finally found its mark. Amen? Can I tell you that a lot of times in our Christian life, there's going to be a lot of times to where we miss the mark. Amen? Sometimes we're going to miss the mark. Sometimes we're going to mess stuff up. Sometimes we make mistakes. Amen? Sometimes it, it, it takes several times. Anybody like me? I've learned everything the hard way. Any of y'all like me? I've never learned anything the easy way, right? I know Brother Ken has learned everything the easy way though, right? I heard a story about you this morning, Brother Ken. It wasn't true? It wasn't true? No. I got to share this story because it's funny. You shouldn't repeat. Now this is that this is this is by the uh, this is by the testimony of Sister Sharon. So you take with that however you want. Amen. I can't confirm or deny. I've only heard one side of the story, but I would generally tend to lead to this. That's probably some truth to it. Amen. Take it however you want. So Sister Sharon can't get a toe joint replacement, right? To get it right, not a toe replacement, but a toe joint replacement. Now it has to be fused. Amen. When you have a toe fused, means that you probably can't walk for a little bit, and you're going to have to have somebody take care of you, provide for you, clean up after you, all of that stuff. And I was told that uh, this said uh, operation takes place on October 15th which just so happens to coincide with apparently with, is that, muzzle, is that the day muzzleloading season opens up? <laughs> which coincides with muzzleloading season. And the way that I was told the story, Brother Ken, and you can refute this if it's not true, but what I was told was is that uh, Sister Sharon was highly recommended to go down to the nursing home. That's true. And find her a provider that would take care of her because Brother Ken would be busy, coincidentally, on this weekend. Amen? Amen. Now I point out all of those things because y'all been married for how many years now? I ain't asking you, Brother Ken. I'm asking Mr. <laughs> Sister Sharon. 52 years of being married. Amen? So obviously, Brother Ken's been doing something right all these years. Amen? So I just, you know, I heard that this morning. I thought there might be some truth to it. So I wanted to share that real quick. So point being is, Y'all pray for, sister, uh, for Brother Ken while he's out that weekend that he can kill a deer with his muzzleloader. Amen? Amen. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave her for the whole month where I can hunt guns. 
<laughs> oh man. So that's what you get when you come to Arkansas, he's Calvin. For meals is what he's asking. <laughs> so he'll probably yeah, he'll probably uh we probably need to make Brother Ken a meal train or something for that month. <laughs> oh man. I don't even know where I got to that from, but it was funny enough I wanted to tell it anyway, so so if we're wondering where Sister Sharon's going to be at for in the next month or so, come October, the month of October, then uh, we know where to visit her. Amen. But uh, anyways, uh, <coughs> y'all, y'all pray for Sister Sharon and Brother Ken. Amen. They need it. Um, <coughs> here's the point that I'm trying to make to you. When you look at all of the stories in the Bible, and this is one of the greatest ones, when you look at all of the greatest characters in the Bible, you look at Noah. Here's Noah. God took a look around, and Noah was the only righteous man on earth, right? Spent his entire life preaching and building an ark. Here comes the flood. We all know the story. We all know Noah, a very well-known character, right? As soon as Noah gets off the boat, guess what Noah does? Noah failed. Noah failed, amen. Here's so many, I mean, there's just so many examples I could give you in the Bible. Here's Peter. Here's Peter. The Lord says, so Peter, can y'all wait here and pray? I'm going to go yonder and, and uh, pray. Y'all wait here and, and, and y'all pray while I'm gone, amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got you, Lord. Comes back, guess what Peter does? Here's the disciples, they're asleep. Kind of like some of y'all right now, amen? Here's the Lord, he says, oh, Peter, you'll deny me thrice. Oh, Lord, though everybody else deny you, though everybody else leave you, though everybody else forsake you, not I. And the Lord says, oh, Peter, before the rooster crows three times, you'll deny me. Which, oh, by the way, Somehow I have a rooster. I don't think that uh, hens go, kr, 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 do they? Maybe this must be one of them funny new age hens today. Brother Brett, I don't know. But the last time I checked, I was supposed to be getting all pullets at the store. Do an extra. Nah. That was a mistake somewhere. Amen. At least I got one out there going, grr, grr, grr. And I'm like, wait a minute here. Here's the point being, the cock threw thrice, as the Bible says, and Peter had felt the Lord. So many stories I could give you throughout the Bible, but I won't for the sake of time today. So many times people, even in the will of God, even in the faith of God, even at times like David having strong faith, they trusted God. But can I tell you today that sometimes that doesn't mean that you're not going to fail. Even though you're in the will of God, even though you're, you're doing your best to live for the Lord, even though you're doing everything you think that you should for the Lord, can I tell you that there's times that we're still going to fail. Amen. Amen. You see, David, although he had stepped up, he had filled that void, although David had great faith, even though David had saw the God that had delivered him literally from the lion's paw and from the bear's mouth and, and, and saw all of the things that God had delivered the children of Israel out of and had gotten them through with his own eyes, yet David, when he sought to fault Goliath, he didn't just go with one stone. Instead, he picked up five. You say, why would he do that? Because he thought there was a chance he could fail. Amen? Any of y'all carry a pistol with you? None of y'all carry a pistol? Okay. Amen. Brother Zach carries a pistol at school, right? Do you carry do that you carry a pistol still? Do you just carry one bullet in it? 
How many bullets you carry in it? Sixteen. Why do you carry sixteen bullets in it? It's most little hold. Huh? It's most little hold. It's the most little hold. Why don't you just carry one? Ain't that enough? I graduated from that stage. <laughs> no more party five for me. Some of you grannies in here, I know y'all ain't raising your hands, but I know you got to get out in your car right now. I know you probably got three or four extra clips out there too, just in case things go real, real bad. Amen? You ain't bringing just one bullet to the fight. You say, why is it? Why is it that you'd have a whole clip full of 16 shells? Why wouldn't you just bring one? Just like David, there's always a chance that you could miss. What I'm trying to tell you is this morning, David was prepared. Even though David had faith, even though David was in the will of God, even though David was doing what God had called him to do, David still understood that there was a chance that he could miss the mark. You say, what are you trying to tell us, preacher? I'm trying to tell you that even though even though you're a Christian, even though I'm a preacher, even though you've been to church all your life, I'm here to tell you this morning there's still a chance that you could fail. Amen? You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? What I'm trying to tell you is just keep slinging stones. Keep slinging stones. You see, David wasn't about to give up. Even if David would have missed after the first shot, even if David would have messed up the second shot, even if David would have missed the mark on the third and fourth shot, David was still prepared to keep slinging stones. Amen. I tell you that just by way of encouragement this morning. I see so many people that are, that are getting out, that are done, that, that mess up, that make mistakes. And yes, sometimes, you know, even the church, we come down real hard. We, we, you know, we, we, we're, we're all judgmental. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Amen. It's, it's the way that we are. It's a part of our nature. You can say that you're not, but I guarantee you that you are. Amen. <clears throat> but can I tell you, I'm glad that we serve a God today. Amen. I'm glad that we serve a God today that even though when we miss the mark, even though that when we fall short, even though when we make a mess of everything, amen, even when we're doing what He's called us to do. Do you know how many times I have messed everything up trying to do what God has called me to do? You say, yes, preacher, you've been a pastor here for almost two years now next month. Yes, we know how many things you mess up, amen. Listen, I'm here to tell you that even though my faith Faith is strong in God. Even though I'm doing the work and the will of God, I'm still here to tell you I still mess up all the times. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm trying to tell you, just keep slinging. <coughs> Amen? Some of you might be on the third or fourth shot already. You know what I tell you? Keep slinging. Amen? Keep slinging them stones. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep going. Yeah, you might miss the mark. You might mess up. Amen. But don't give up. Don't quit. David wasn't prepared to quit. Amen. He was prepared to keep slinging. Keep slinging stones. Would you stand this morning? I'm done. Some of y'all can at least say amen right there. Miss Madonna, y'all can come on and get ready if y'all want to. Keep slinging. Amen. Just don't quit. Keep slinging. God knew that we would fail. Amen. You know, old Peter, he failed. He denied the Lord. Oh, no, Lord, no. Everybody else, everybody else denies you. Not me. Uh-uh, not me. Peter gave up. You know what Peter did? Peter messed up. You know what Peter did? What he knew to do? Went back fishing. Well, I guess the Lord's done with me. I've done messed this up. Done made a stink of this. 
guess the Lord's done with me. Might as well just go back fishing. And here comes the Lord. He makes it a point. Tells the disciples, says, go get the disciples. And when you go get them, guess who else? Get Peter too. Tell old Peter to come on too. Yeah, Peter had failed. Peter had made a mistake. Yeah, Peter's pride had got the best of him. Peter had made a mistake. But I'm glad that God still uses people that messes up and makes mistakes. Amen? Because there ain't any other people out there. What I'm trying to tell you is, is don't count yourself out this morning. You may have counted yourself out, but God hasn't. I'm telling you to keep slinging. Keep slinging stones. Keep going. Amen. Just because you missed the mark one, you still got some stones in your shepherd's bag. Keep slinging. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep going. Amen. And eventually, you'll find the mark. But you'll never find the mark if you quit before you get there. Paul said, I press towards the mark. You know why he had to press? Because he knew there was going to be resistance. The devil doesn't want you to succeed. Your enemy doesn't want you to succeed. Your devil wants you to fail. The devil wants you to fail. But you know what you do? Keep slinging. Keep slinging. Amen. Keep slinging them stones. Don't give up. <clears throat> Peter finally comes back on the scene and gets right with the Lord. Here comes the day of Pentecost. Guess who God used to preach the message on the day of Pentecost? That old failure, Peter. Preaches the message to all those Jews that were gathered there. Keep slinging, amen. Y'all know what I'm saying this morning? Just keep slinging as we sing a verse or two of invitation this morning.